Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you the touch disease. I'm going to be showing you exactly the symptoms of them and what we do to fix it. This is a very in-depth repair. It's a microsolder repair. Basically, Apple kind of sort of denied it, but it's their issue. And they're making people pay something like 120 pounds to replace the phone. And what you're having in return is actually phone that's probably going to develop the same exact issue as you already have. So, because this is, it's something they say that is the customer's fault because of dropping and bending and stuff like that. In most cases, to be honest, that's not even the truth because we have a lot of these six pluses coming in and they are straight. They look like they've never been dropped before, never had any work done, just like this one. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly what goes wrong and what the, what the actual cause is. So what you may find is if you have this problem, if you're a customer and you have this problem or you're a repair shop and you see these issues, when you flex the phone, and sometimes it does it by itself, when you flex, you kind of have these bars at the top and the touch sort of is all over the shop. It doesn't matter what screen you put on there, it's just all over the shop. It either does its own thing or completely freezes and it doesn't really work properly. So here we have the board and it's gonna be on this side, on the opposite side. And that right there is the reason why the touch issues occur. This is called Menson. This is one of the Touch IC chips. This one here down there is called Cumulus. What you need to do is obviously with this one, you need to take the chip off and right there in that corner, there's an M1 pad, which is what you need to reconnect. That is what tears. So what happens is from the factory onward, it's already under pressure. It only takes a little while until it actually breaks completely. Regardless of what the person does, this, this can happen. Obviously, it's more likely if the phone's dropped and bent. However, it does happen regardless of what the person does. This is like a huge issue with the 6 Plus and has been ever since they came out. So what we need to do is we need to take the tape off this. There's glue underneath. Otherwise, if we don't take this off, this glue, then we run the chance of the solar melting in this side and they aren't freely moving then. And what happens is some of the components may disconnect and stuff like the front camera may not work, the proximity sensor may not work, the speaker, all the stuff that's around here. Just some light here. I use 200 degrees on AT airflow on a quick. So all I'm doing is I'm taking off this black stuff so they can freely move the components if in case they melt. The chip is around this area, I would say, somewhere around here. And we're gonna flip the board around and we're gonna get to work on Menson. I do recommend heat sinking the Wi-Fi chip. So here's Menson and I'm gonna lift it off uh, with enough heat and that's up to you to decide what is enough whenever solar melts for you. For me, it's 449 on 80 airflow on a quick, but obviously it's gonna be different for everyone pretty much. There we are. That right there is the issue. And you can see it's oxidized as well on this pad. So this is M1. And I need to put that back as well. So what I'm gonna do is, gonna put some flux on now. Nice shiny pads now. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to manually run a jumper to that pad, just in case, so that was the issue this time. It may not have been, it may have just been oxidized in this case, but most of the time it's, it's a torn pad. There we are. 
I'm just gonna flow this one back into place. There's one crooked one as well at the bottom, so I'm just gonna put some uh, from there. There we are, boom, float right into place. So now we're gonna run the jumper. And what we're going to do is, we're gonna scratch away here. So when we scratched away at the trace, we can put some solder on it. And we can take a new wire and put it back on them. So, so basically we're retracing the trace. So if I test with multimeter now it should have perfect contact. Perfect. We need to put soldering mask on, which will protect it from any bridging and also when we float back in place the chip, it won't go anywhere. So now we're going to put our UV lights on. So now we're just waiting for that to dry. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So now we're going to reball the other chip. So the reason I'm reballing instead of replacing is because it's not the chip that's the issue. The chip isn't actually broken. It's just a connection to the chip that's broken. Also, you avoid any issues that the replacement chip may have, which is usually they don't, they, they're not actually reballed nicely. So I have had, for example, all the IC chips and they've had, they, they were a nightmare because it just continuously didn't work. And then I realized the reball on it was terrible. So that's the reason why I do my own just to avoid any further issues. So I haven't actually tried these new, the touch I see on these new Quan Lee stencils, which I'm curious to try. I did try it on Audio IC yesterday. And that was nice. This is probably it. Yeah. It's just so easy to get aligned on these. Ironically, it's, it's way more difficult to get aligned on one of those silver 3D stencils. I mean, the whole point of having 3D stencils is that it's easier. Boom. Look at that. That is so perfect. So now all we need to do is put it back on and that's it. So let's see, dot top right. Don't forget to shield the Wi-Fi again. Mm. 
So all that's left to do now is flow it in place. Boom, there it goes. And yeah, that's nicely in place. Cool. And just to double check. Yep, that's good. Perfect. So let's just test if it works for now. So here's a test. Does it work? And there we are. And moment of truth. Yeah. It's probably going to turn off in a second because it's less than 20%. No more bars. So you can see here, nothing. Perfect. So that's how we diagnose and repair the 6 plus touch disease. Now obviously you, you saw that the pad was oxidized. I mean is that really a, a, a customer problem? No, not really. And this phone is in perfect condition as well. It's not bent. It's, it's never been opened before, actually, before this. And it's probably not even that old either. I mean, six plus touch disease. They, they came as early with, as within a year of buying the phone. And this problem continues onto other phones, including the 7 with the Audi IC. It's the same exact issue where the pads just disconnect from the trace. The 10 as well, where, where there's a little bit of flex on the motherboard because it's dual layer. It disconnects slightly and then the phone just doesn't, doesn't work. Um, innovation, yes, great on the 10 with the, with the dual layer board, but um, obviously it's gonna bring a lot of more issues in regards to slight flexes and stuff like that. The problem is also is that the logic board is directly connected with the outer housing, which means any flex in the housing, any droppage is going to go directly into the logic board. There's no buffer, there's no rubber in between it that, that'll keep it from happening. Even with something as simple as maybe the SIM tray, removing the SIM tray, pulling it in and out can influence that specific issue. So if you need this done, you can follow our tutorial if you want, but if you need this done as a customer, you can just walk in or send it in, go to our website www.simplyrepair.uk. If you're a business and looking to outsource these kinds of repairs because they're quite in depth, we have great business to business pricing. If you'd like, you can just send us an email or go to our website as well. You can also phone us or go to our Instagram as well. We deal with a lot of businesses on there as well. So if you want any of this stuff done, no problem at all, just get in contact. Um, I'm sure we can get that sorted pretty quick. So this customer came in yesterday, it's already done. Came in yesterday night, actually. We're pretty quick like that. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.